So here we start our last chapter of um, the semester. And, um, you know, here we end on one of the most significant um, historic periods that really created a huge impact on Western civilization, which is um, the religious reformations that were taking place within Europe. And um, I think what's important to understand about uh, the Reformation is that in many ways we're kind of we're still kind of living um, directly we're, we're, we're living in context to many things that are still not even fully resolved in, in, in many ways. Um, uh, so you know what we are, really talking about in, in this lecture, I mean, when we go over the causes of the Reformation, what was set out by Luther mainly, so we'll be having a big discussion of him, um, and then, you know, his response and reaction to the Catholic Church. Keep in mind that where we get it wrong, many of us in the West, and, and especially in the United States, is we think of this the Christian world simply being split up between the Catholic world and the Protestant world, as, as it's better known, and forgetting about the Eastern Church and the Eastern Churches and the diversity of Christianity as we go outside of the West um, as well. So um, I feel like, for the most part, many Americans, especially if you grow up in a non-Catholic uh, Christian tradition, oh, uh, we tend to think that there's simply the options of being a Christian as being Catholic or one of the uh, uh, Protestant religions um, uh, here. Now, actually, let me let me back up and clarify some points. The, in the Reformation, when we talk about Luther or other Protestant groups, Protestant comes from the word protest. And so anything that was protesting the ideas that were coming out of the Catholic Church, the word Catholic is Latin and it means universal. The implication is the universal church of Christ. Okay, that's the implication there. You know, the word Christ is not in there, but Catholic. Catholicism means universalism. Okay. And it and it claimed to be the the church um, that every if, if you're a Christian and you're not claiming Catholic Catholicism saying you're not you're not a part of Christ's actual church okay and you had this kind of in the West uh, uh, a rebellion against that keep in mind that the Eastern Roman Church and the uh, Catholic Church already excommunicated each other right the great schism that took place uh, centuries before and um, now uh, the, the Western Church is falling from within as well, okay, falling apart. Um, and what we get is religious groups that are going to claim that the Catholic Church got it all wrong by involving many non-biblical things, for example. Um, that is the oversimplification of a kind of Protestant argument that basically... The Catholic Church, in some way or another, has did something that is a, a man-made tradition and um, that a Protestant is going to go back to a more biblical-based set of ideas. And as we'll see in some of these lectures and documentaries, that <clears throat> Luther, as a Catholic, you know, breaks away um, from some things of the Church. And then other Protestants think that Luther and some other reformists, okay, right, of um, didn't go far enough in removing uh, Catholic isms from their Christianity, okay, and so not all Protestants are going to get along as well, and sometimes they will fight. And what you're going to have in Europe is major religious wars, and I, 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 I've said this in many of my different lectures and all my, in a lot of my classes, um, because Middle East is my um, you know, kind of specialty. If you see what's going on now and, and you're uh, shocked by the way that Shiites and Sunni Muslims are killing each other in the Middle East and, um, you know, ISIS, keep in mind that the churches 
and the ancient artifacts that are being destroyed by this radical Islamic group ISIS, those churches and those ancient artifacts have long been under a series of centuries of Muslim rule. And it's only these new guys that have actually been destroying uh, these buildings or taking them over. Um, so there's something different that has changed, right? This is this is a new form of religion as opposed to an old one, right? But, but this is what's kind of, um, I, don't, I don't want to use the word interesting, is when you have these kind of religious wars, of, of people trying to go back to an imaginary past and claiming that for centuries everybody's been doing it wrong and it's also usually tied into a lot of geopolitics those of us who study the middle east know that since the cold war you there are many many factors have, that have created the religious tensions in the middle east that are outside of religion and that religion gets incorporated into okay and so, in a sense, this is really what the state of Europe was. So, the kind of bloodletting and the kind of uh, chaos that's happening in the Middle East now, the tragedies that we see are sometimes in parts of Africa or other places, is what Europe was looking like around this time, okay? Um, and, uh, you know, I just want us to kind of keep that in mind and to realize that many of the settlers that came here to the United States, the first colonists, were fleeing these Reformation Wars, these religious wars, and they weren't coming to set up a freedom of religion. They came here to be free to practice their own. And there were many um, religious Christians uh, of the, from the Protestant end coming to the United States that actually were militantly anti-Catholic and militantly uh, against any other kind of idea of religion than their own. And uh, uh, part of the founding fathers set up for the separation of church and state, that this is my argument now, I think that one would have to research this, this is debatable, but I think that it, it seems to me very clear that the reason for establishing in the United States the separation of church and state was that our founding fathers we're very well aware of this long protracted uh, bloodletting and, and chaos and, and problems that were coming out of the religious wars of Europe. And it was because many states had official national uh, religions. In other words, the state decided, so you have the Church of England, um, the, the, uh, the Lutheran Church of Scandinavia, uh, still, by the way, um, interestingly enough, which is um, a whole other topic. But um, I think the Founding Fathers, wisely so, decided that there wouldn't be an official Christian religion that actually has political power or is wedded to political power in the United States. I mean, George Washington banned anti-Catholic uh, holidays or, or, or events in his military, so he, want, he wanted to create unity. And he was constantly kind of... Um, aware of and, and, and doing things, maneuvering around things that would put divis divisiveness within his ranks over the, the, the Protestant Catholic uh, set of issues, okay? And um, for many Scots-Irish that are in the United States, uh, and some of you have heard me talk about this, um, and I saw I put posts uh, with St. Patrick's Day, that lowland Scots of Protestants were sent into Northern Ireland to beat up basically Catholic Irish, who then had issues with the Catholics in Northern Ireland, and also were a form of Protestantism that was against the Church of England, and it created a lot of problems, and many of them there, then they uh, uh, moved into the United States, well, it wasn't the United States then, into uh, America and the colonies, and uh, that's why they're Scots-Irish, meaning they were Scottish people who went to Ireland who then came to the United States. They were hardcore, uh, mainly mainly Presbyterian um, uh, Christians who were fighting uh, um, the whole time against somebody, and 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 um, uh, and you know they unleashed the, the, the what they put on the Irish Catholics in Northern Ireland. They ended up unleashing on the Native Americans uh, here in the United States, and then also on the British. Uh, many of them fought uh, uh, very much um, uh, hardcore in the Revolutionary Army. So, in, in other words, uh, 
you know, I, I'm showing that there's a link, even like in, 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 in the United States with our own culture, that the anti-Catholicism of the Irish coming in later on was due mainly by the Scots-Irish in America who had a long tradition of history of hating on Catholics that was rooted all the way back into this time period, okay? The fact that JFK was the first non-Protestant president of the United States um, and that was made a big deal about was rooted all the way back into this time period, okay? And, and from our culture uh, being um, into that. Uh, uh, um, have, I mean, having all these set, sets of issues, sorry. So I, I just kind of want you to see this importance. Now, I am going to end up starting, uh, putting in some lectures from my, my World Civ class. And one's gonna start off kind of abruptly from the Charlemagne period and then get into um, Luther and then I'm going to have a documentary for you to watch. And so hopefully you'll be able to get a strong enough sense of the significance of this time period and, um, you know, seeing again how, how uh, its legacy, legacy still lingers on to this uh, very day.